Good morning and welcome to our service for this week um, from Ipswich Citadel. And I hope you are all okay. I hope you've been keeping cool, although by the time you hear this, we might have had some rain. Let's hope that's the case. Today we're thinking about faith, hope and love, but not 1 Corinthians 13, but uh, more about that later. I hope you have your song sheets with you where you can follow the words of the songs this morning and join in. And also just to remind you of the Coffee Fellowship on Monday at 10 o'clock, got the time wrong last week, 10 o'clock on Monday uh, and a Zoom invite will come out for that. And also on Thursday, where we have our Bible fellowship. That's at 11 o'clock on Thursday on Zoom. Again, an invitation will come out for that. Also, our survey. If you haven't filled in your survey that we've sent out online, you have until tomorrow to do that, please. That's our Back to Worship survey. And if you could answer those few questions, that would really be brilliant. So our first song for this morning, 998, and it's in the justice section of the songbook, 998, beauty for brokenness, hope for despair, 998.
That's great. Shall we pray at this part of our meeting today? Father God, as we gather again for worship in this way, we just pray again that you will speak to us, we will listen to what you have to say to us, that we will indeed get a blessing from uh, joining in or listening to the, to the music, uh, listening to your word, and also in responding to what you have to say to us this morning, Lord. So we just ask you to bless us this morning and just as we gather uh, in this way. Amen. Amen. The scripture today is in two parts, and it's both from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, and the first part of that is 15 verses 21 to 28. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word, so his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, It is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. We're going to sing again. And it's five to five on, uh, in our songbook. Greater things, the, the, the chorus says, give us faith, Lord, as we pray. Faith for greater things. We've sang about hope already in the first song, and this song is talking about give us faith for greater things. That's what we all want, isn't it? Greater things. We want the Lord to work greater things in our lives. So here we are, 525. What a work the Lord has done.
great. Now this week, we haven't got the ISS or the International Staff Songsters, we've got Chelsford Songsters who are going to sing to us this morning. And uh, they're going to sing to us, My Help Comes from the Lord. And it's based on Psalm 121. And that's what we're going to sing just now. Chelsford Songsters, My Help Comes from the Lord. That's a lovely version of that song. I will lift mine eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. Sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, now and for evermore. Amen. We've already sung this morning about greater things, having faith for greater things. And now in our time of prayer, our prayer focus this morning, we're going to 
use a lovely song, which I know is special to so many people I've known over, over the past 10 or so years from the, in the Salvation Army. And it's number 30 in our songbook. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. He sendeth more strength as our labours increase. To added afflictions, he addeth his mercy. To multiply trials, he multiplies peace. And then the two verses following that go on about how, when we're exhausted, God gives us endurance. And in the last verse it says, His love has no limits, His grace no measure. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. Number 30. song we're just going to enter a time of prayer just now and uh, just quieten ourselves and think about this week perhaps I don't know what type of week you have had but we just take this time to pray and bring those concerns to God that we have just now shall we pray Father God, fill our souls with your wonderful love and light. Give us strength, give us courage to reflect that love and light in the world. Let us never shrink back from who we are in you or hide our light inside ourselves. Help us to renew our sense of joy. God of power and might, your world cries out from the depths a world dominated by darkness of war, terror and suffering. We think of the ongoing and deepening conflicts around the world and we pray for those who have had to flee from their homes, countries and livelihoods, those who risk their lives desperate for a new start from fear and war. May they, may we see your light May we feel your strength and power and know the truth of your promise that we shall not be overcome by the darkness. We pray for situations today, especially in, we think of Lebanon, and we think of the migrants that making that desperate attempt to, uh, over the channel to, get, to reach our shores. And especially we think of our young people as they have received their exam results, and they're now thinking of their future lives, whether it be in college, university, or work. God of compassion and grace, we share with you our love and concern for people in this world today. And we pray that they will find your strength in the compassion and love of those around them. We pray for tolerance in our society and let your light shine through the darkness. God of life, we ask that your 
healing power on those who are enduring illness at this time. We pray for people close to us who've recently lost loved ones. We know your everlasting light and love shines within us. In moments of great sadness and great joy, be with those who need it just now. God of love and hope, increase our faith. Give us a deeper sense of who we are in you and help us to be aware of your presence each and every day. Make us instruments of love and praise. May our words, actions and lives be living examples of your forgiving, healing, life-giving love. We bring this and all our prayers in and through our precious Saviour's sake. Amen. Shall we just join together in the family prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lovely song that Louise is going to play for us just now. King of kings, majesty, God of heaven, living in me. The chorus, your majesty, I can but bow. I lay my all before you now. 376. Thank you, Louise. I live to serve your majesty. Our second Bible reading is the second part of Matthew chapter 15, and it's verses 29 to 39, just now. Jesus left there and went along the Sea of Galilee. Then he went up on the mountainside and sat down. Great crowds came to him, bringing the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others, and laid them at his feet. And he healed them. The people were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled made well, the lame walking, and the blind seeing, and they praised the God of Israel. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion for these people. They have been with me for three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, or they may collapse on the way. His disciples answered, Where could we get enough bread in this remote place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have? Jesus asked. Seven, they replied, and a few small fish. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. 
Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, and when he had given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and they in turn to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Afterwards, the disciples picked up seven basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those who ate was 4,000 men, besides women and children. After Jesus had sent the crowd away, he got into the boat and went to the vicinity of Magadan. Thank you for uh, bringing us the reading this morning. We're now going to listen to the International Staff Band bringing you a lovely arrangement entitled Knowing You, Jesus. And the chorus says, Knowing You, Jesus, Knowing You. This, there is no greater thing. You're my all. You're the best. You're my joy, my righteousness, and I love you, Lord. All I once held dear. You can find in the words of song number five, six, five. Knowing you, Jesus.
That's great. Lovely arrangement of, uh, of that particular song by the staff band. So, as I said right at the start, we're looking at faith, hope, and love, but not 1 Corinthians 13, which is perhaps the most recognized verse that deals with those three subjects. But you can see from our Bible reading today that uh, it deals with those uh, aspects as well, and I'll just outline them as we go through my thoughts for this morning. So, we live don't we? We live in a world that is far from fair and just. Whose fault that is, is something we could debate for a long time. But some of it is simply the result of where we live. The message of Christ's love and his kingdom should still be our driving force in our faith, in our belief uh, today. We can have an impact and how we react, how we live, how we show compassion to people is so significant that it, it can make people think, it can make them ask questions about why we do it. What is our motivation? We have to be ready to say why we do what we do as well. The early Salvation Army was an outward-looking, generous and, un and unselfish, and we should still be seeking to make a difference in others in our communities uh, and those we know. That's nothing new, and I have uh, spoken about that already. It's a challenge as we think about how to engage with, with people. We should follow Jesus' example, of course, and teaching. And what is it that he requires of us? Well, we can look in Micah 6 if you want to know what God requires of us. And it goes beyond just giving our money, time, and talents. I believe it's deeper than that. I hope we really try to understand how people live and work and survive. How can we get beside and walk beside these people to find out how they work? and how they survived just, just now. I think it is something that has come to the fore, very much so in our present situation. So what comes out of this account of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel? I think we see faith, faith of the woman. Then we see hope and love, compassion and understanding. So the first of those, faith. We have to have faith. That's obvious. But whenever we ask or get someone to do something for us or we have some work done, we put our faith in others. We ask experts. We ask trades people, designers, if we're having something built or made. And they're all examples where we have to put our faith in the expertise of other people, designers, builders. There are other examples, of course, of people we put our faith in, doctors, and scientists, especially just now. Jesus here highlighted faith in this one, in the Canaanite woman is another one, a friends of the paralytic, the ruler who had a sick daughter, the woman subject to bleeding, and the centurion. And Jesus rebuked the disciples when they appeared to have little faith and demonstrated frequently how faith worked, various miracles that Jesus performed. But if we think about it, how often do we even come close to matching a real faith? I have faith in many things, but they don't always happen. Ipswich Town getting into the premiership again. There we are, there's just one. Faith is significant, but it's only one part. Our Christian life involves so much more. So the second part, it involves compassion or, or showing love. It is clear from the verses in Matthew 15 that compassion is as essential as faith. It may seem that the, the evidence of compassion has been on the decrease. Think of political upheaval in the recent years, acts of terrorism, and stronger than ever voice to build walls rather than bridges. Have we lost our sense of compassion in this country at the moment? 
I'm not sure because we have seen great and heard fantastic stories of people helping others, especially now in this COVID situation and, and all the volunteers doing stuff and helping people just now. The reading reminds us that faith was not all that was needed for the disciples and us. We read that Jesus had compassion on the people in the crowd. They had been hanging on his words. He had been teaching them. But that was not sufficient. They also needed physical care. The people appear to have hunger for God, but encountered real physical hunger. In the message paraphrase, it says that he hurt for them, verse 32. And the Bible says so much more, so much about the poor. And we have a part to play, being Jesus to those people, well, all people today. We know that Jesus can do a lot with a little. And with a small amount of food, he feeds the crowd. If we offer him the small amount that we have, he multiplies it many times over. He uses what is offered. And we see that from both the feeding miracles that are outlined in Scripture. And we've sung already, haven't we, about how he gives more grace as our burdens grow deeper. So the third aspect coming out of this reading for me which I hope you see, is understanding. An understanding that builds hope. Understanding is a vital part of Christian living. Any living comes to that. Here at Ipswich, our recent natural church development survey results showed that we here are good at, or great at service. We're good at showing compassion and all that that entails. However, as we have seen, that is not the whole story. Deepening our understanding is also so important. How do we do that? Well, through personal devotions, Bible studies, focus groups, prayer groups. They all help to build us up and increase our understanding of God's will and our relationship with him. A relationship that builds hope for us and hopefully for others as well. Our service however it's done, gives us the opportunity to see something happen through what we do and give. How we serve, bringing hope in a dark world or serving the hungry, the poor and the outcasts. Many parts of the world or communities here have more material poverty than we have. Wealth versus poverty becomes more prominent. And the needs and the beauty of the people who live there we should then gain a greater appreciation of what life is like for the marginalized if we can serve them and get alongside them. And it gives us a greater understanding of the reality of those people in their settings. And then people ask questions, especially when confronted with the faith often possessed by Christians who are living in the midst of widespread material poverty. Living incarnationally, we call it. Getting alongside those people and serving them and helping them. This often provides a challenge as to how we can better serve in our local situation. And it should produce a response in us. What might we need to give up in terms of possessions, goals, security, to become all that God has called us to be? Having faith leads to showing love and providing hope. Paul understood these three features of faith, hope, and love. And you can read that, of course, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But faith without doing something to show compassion and bring hope is not totally enough. See James chapter 2, where he speaks about faith and deeds. We have to take the opportunity to consider how we ourselves can make a difference. Take time now and, and in the days to come to consider how we can respond to God's prompting in these areas. We can take time just to reflect on those thoughts 
just now. And we're going to listen to a song by Tim Hughes, and it's called God of Justice. And the words there, it says, And Jesus, you have called us. Freely we've received. Now freely we will give. It's a bit of a chat. Well, it is a challenge to us. Many of us have got so much. And we often sing that song, don't we? Freely we've received. Now freely we must give. So just as take time to reflect as we listen to Tim Hughes with his song, God of Justice. Shall we pray? Father God, we do thank you that uh, you have spoken to us today. And thank you 
that we can respond to you and about what you are telling us, what you are guiding us to do just now. You take what we have, be it little, and you can use it. And we just pray that we will claim that, that we will know that today, that what we have can be used by you to help, to guide, and to bring people's hope just now. Help us to have more faith. Help us to show love and bring that hope that people need just now. Father God, we thank you. Amen. Our last, well, no, it's our last, our, our next song, I should say, is 925. And it's sort of like our um, final song, although we're going to have a sung benediction to finish this morning. But 925 says, Let us go out into the world with love in our hearts. Let us go out into the world with joy in our hearts, the second verse says. The third verse says, Let us go into the world with faith in our hearts. And then the final verse, let us go out into the world with Christ in our hearts. Just do those things as we serve people uh, just now. Nine, two, five, let us go out into the world. Final song actually is a benediction, and uh, we're going to. I just encourage you to join in with this benediction this morning. And it's five two four in the songbook. We have peace, peace with God. Five two four. I hope you've enjoyed joining in with us today as we think about those three aspects of our Christian life, faith, hope, and 
love. And I just encourage you to um, consider and reflect on those this week. Don't forget our coffee morning on Monday at 10 and also our Bible fellowship on Thursday at, at 11. Just have a good day. Have a good week. God bless you all.